Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The war on drugs continue in the scene mine. Also tonight, CUC receives a generous check for a big project. And public service is recognized this week. In sports, one young girl hits the mat and some kicks. Stay with us, we have these stories and more next here on the Channel 2 News. I have a phone. I have no TV. TV on phone. I have a tablet. I have no TV. Ooh. TV on tab. I have a TV. I have a stick. Ooh. TV on stick. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh, streaming TV. Northern Marianas, rise up to the challenge! June 17th through June 25th, the Northern Marianas will be hosting the NM Pacific Mini Games 2022. Athletics, badminton, baseball, beach volleyball, golf, tennis, triathlon, ba and weightlifting. Visit northernmarianas2022.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you to our sponsors, Joten Dadai Foundation, T Galleria, Tensu Lin Foundation, Elin Group, Northern Marianas College, IT&E, Marpat, Docomo Pacific, McDonald's of Saipan, Mobile Oil Micronesia, Bank of Guam, Triple J and more. And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich. From the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich. From the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich. From the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich. You'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, May 6, 2022. Three individuals who attempted to smuggle meth into the CNMI face federal charges after federal agents discover a drug den in Papagu loaded with guns, money, and more narcotics. Hong Jin Lee, Wei Shu Wang, and Yong Bin Ni are being charged with Count 1, conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute a federally controlled substance, and Count 2, conspiracy to maintain a drug-involved premises. The three individuals appeared in federal court Thursday afternoon before Magistrate Heather Kennedy. The meth was discovered by CNMI Customs Officer Franklin Sablon during a routine inspection at the Chalankanoa Post Office. The drugs were concealed inside two packages that contained chinaware and ceramic vases. Captain John Henry Sablon from the Bureau of Contraband Enforcement states that the delivery was quite similar to the recent bust that occurred in March. The meth was hidden inside the cardboard cutouts used in packing fragile items. As soon as they saw um, uh, what looked like uh, some tampered uh, cardboard boxes again, it was uh, similar to our last uh, seizure. Um, 
it led them to further investigation and which led to the seizure of the uh, two pounds of meth. The first package contained approximately 493.4 grams of methamphetamine and the second package approximately 504 grams. The origin of the packages? Canada. Officers replaced the meth with sham, which is a non-controlled substance. It was resealed and then transferred to the CCC post in Garapan. Hong Ji Lee picked up the package the next day. Law enforcement maintained surveillance of the vehicle, which headed to San Vicente. Lee conducted a counter-surveillance by circling the San Vicente Elementary School in attempts to lose any possible surveillance. Then, she drove to a single-story house in the village of Papagoo. Law enforcement arrived on the scene and observed Wei Shu Wang with a knife in his hand ready to open the package. Both Li and Wang were arrested. The third suspect, Yang Bin Ni, was asleep inside the house and he was later arrested as well. Officers then secured the area around the house and observed three security cameras near the front door. Upon entering the residence, officers saw in plain sight apparent methamphetamine, plastic baggies, bundles of money, and sophisticated surveillance cameras with DVR and monitors. Officers secured a search warrant to conduct a further search. According to the report of a DEA special agent, the house resembled a drug den with no furniture or any kitchen utensils. Officers observed a man-sized propane tank in the middle of the living room and multiple bottles of what appeared to be urine were found inside the bedrooms. The report stated, Quote, the overall condition of the house was obscenely filthy, unquote. In the bedroom where Wang was asleep, there was tin foil with meth, a bottle and straws, and an airsoft pistol. In the master bedroom, enforcement seized approximately 3,000 empty Ziploc baggies, tin foil with suspected methamphetamine, a large undetermined amount of U.S. currency, three airsoft guns, and 46 Ziploc baggies that contained 251 gross grams of methamphetamine. Another 17 gross grams of meth were found inside the female's bedroom. The female told officers she has been living at the residence for six weeks and she helps Wang measure and package the drugs for sales. She also said that Wang just received 200 grams a few days ago. Lee states Wang uses coffee filters to change the color of meth. Users are known to save their urine and concentrate it down to filter out any additional meth. Wang, for his part, stated that he is an informant for the police and he needed to stay in the drug community. The package received was a small amount and he was waiting for something bigger before telling the police. He then admitted that he is not an informant. The third suspect states he uses meth for back pain and he gets it for free for helping around the house. The three individuals remain under the custody of the Department of Corrections. This is the second interception of a sizable amount of crystal meth for the scene of my customs. And with more equipment and training, officers say they can detect drugs coming in a lot better than before. Crystal methamphetamine is a very, very serious community problem, and I and and it is a very expensive problem for for taxpayers to have to foot the bill. The current street value of one gram of crystal methamphetamine in the Sinai can cost five hundred to six hundred dollars. The neighboring island of Guam sells a gram for about fifty dollars. Lieutenant James Delon Guerrero says this indicates a low supply of meth here in the Sinai. And what that tells us is that there is a short supply on the amount of uh, crystal meth out on the street, which is a good thing actually, because it shows that. The higher the price, that means the less available the merchandise is. Uh, but at the same time, we also have to be mindful that, you know, stopping contraband at the border really does go a long ways in terms of helping our other law enforcement partners so that they don't have to commit as much resources uh, towards that particular drug enforcement efforts. 
Dilan Guerrero has a checkered past. He is the former commissioner of DPS. In 2016, he was arrested and charged with having sex with an underage girl in the back of a DPS vehicle. According to news files, Dilan Guerrero said he thought the girl was of age. Judge Camacho eventually dismissed the most serious charge in that case, sexual abuse of a minor, and the AG's office declined to comment. This week's recent drug bust was made possible through the efforts of the Cinemite Drug Enforcement Task Force. The task force includes officers from Customs, DPS, and Corrections who works closely with federal agents. It was first established in the late 90s to combat the most widely abused illicit drug in the Cinemai, which was at that time marijuana. If you were to ask me what the difference was between then and now, marijuana was the biggest issue back in the, in the late 80s to early mid 90s. Uh, today, crystal meth is the biggest problem that we have. After a while, people began resorting to a much more convenient fix. People start resorting to uh, drugs that are easier to conceal. Uh, it is odorless, you know, crystal meth is odorless, but what people didn't understand is that it is also highly addictive. Now, once you use it, then you, you more than likely find yourself coming back for more and more and more. But the CNMI has progressed. More support and resources have become available to win the war on drugs. The biggest things that we have going for us here is we, we have the support and we have better equipment, you know, um, compared to, say, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, we have better x-rays. We have a lot more canine. Um, handlers, dogs to use, to utilize uh, at auto parts. Customs has acquired better equipment and more dog handlers to assist in detecting hidden drugs. Training also plays a big factor. Way better trained now than we were, um, you know, a decade ago. The Garapan District will undergo construction that is expected to begin as soon as possible. Water and sewer issues will be addressed. Garapan Square will soon be transformed into a family-friendly destination. But before that project begins, the water sewer line must be addressed. CUC is one of our, our collaborating agencies and they um, are going to be one of the first ones that we cut a check to from our IRP operations account, which is the money set aside to our program um, to help the CNMI upgrade infrastructure. The Garapan Sewer Line Water Line Replacement Project is a complement to the Garapan Revitalization Project. We found out is there were overlapping uh, between projects and this is one of them. And the reason this is, that is one of the reasons why we, we pushed this project uh, ahead of most projects uh, simply because uh, there were overlaps uh, in, in the, uh, the Garapan Revitalization Project with OPD and that's an EPA funded project. Um, uh, and, and so it would have been a disaster had we not um, flagged this. This morning, the Infrastructure Recovery Program, along with Governor Torres, presented the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation with a $2 million check. We include replacement of 1,240 um, of 8-inch and 6-inch gravity main, installation of new sewer manholes, service laterals, temporary bypass system, and asphalt road restoration. So, yay, Governor, thank you for um, allowing us to move forward with this project. This is a huge project. This is, this is a major part of our economic hub, this, this particular area, and this will help and obviously prove the, the support for economic growth and development as we move forward. Um, and again, you know, sanitation is, is, is the biggest concern for CUC along with many, the, other, the other two services we provide. Um, and, and I think this is uh, essential and, uh, and critical to, to have uh, at the forefront. Construction for the Garapan Revitalization Project is expected to begin this August. Governor Torres asked the community for their patience. While well, this construction is ongoing, I ask your patience. Uh, please allow the construction company, all those workers, uh, ample time and space while they do their work. And let's be nice and courteous to all the construction companies. Uh, trust me, they want to get this project finished as soon as possible, and we need our community to, to, to show their support as well. 
Stay humble, be positive, and be honest. This is the advice of the 2022 Lieutenant Governor's Office Employee of the Year. John Paul Lizama was named the Lieutenant Governor's Office Employee of the Year. JP is from the village of Kobler and he is the Building Maintenance Specialist at the Multipurpose Building in Susupi. Lieutenant Governor Palacios says government employees are the backbone of the community. Lizama began as a field worker in 2019 before being promoted to his current role. His job is to maintain the interior and exterior of the facility. His advice to public and private sector employees across the CNMI is this, quote, stay positive, be humble, be honest, learn from your mistakes, and be willing to take advice from people who came before you, unquote. The first full week of the month of May is dedicated to correctional officers and employees all around the nation. Officers and employees of the CNMI Department of Corrections are recognized for their work and contributions for a more peaceful community. Governor Torres signed a proclamation in front of several DOC employees and members of the legislature. Throughout the typhoons, you guys are out there helping pandemic, you guys are out there again helping. So I do know and I want to again uh, truly uh, appreciate uh, all the hard work and dedication that you have. Um, and my administration continue to support each and every one of you. And I'd like to ask also the legislature to continue uh, to support the uh, Department of Correction as you guys do play a vital role in protecting the Commonwealth. During the pandemic, over 50 inmates tested positive for COVID-19 and were moved to a separate quarantine site. DOC was understaffed and employees were working at least 18-hour shifts. DOC Commissioner Wally Villagomez. They were working, you know, every day away from their family, but then they still hold down the fourth day in and day out. Villa Gomez thanked the administration for their support in allowing DOC officers to get their fair share. One, you know, one thing is WGI. It's been long overdue, you know, with the support of the governor. We've pulled through. A lot of these officers have been waiting for it, and where the administration made it happen. In light of Public Service Recognition Week, Governor Torres visited all government agencies and departments, including DOC, to congratulate the employees. All right, coming up, a story about a volleyball competitor who does more than just spike. Stay tuned. I have a phone. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on phone. Get live TV on your phone or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on phone. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Time to put down the sweet, lace up your sneakers, and hit the pavement. Join MVA, Governor Torres, Fit to Lead, CNMI, Tourism Month, 5K Fun Run, May 14th, 6.30 a.m. on Beach Road. Participants will receive a free t-shirt. And are you ready to raffle? Stick around for raffle.
bills too. Register today at Mariana's Visitors Authority Office. Sienna, my office of the governor. Or online at the MVA site. Mariana's. It's time. We come together to get fit, fit to, to lead. lead. Proceeds will benefit. Diabetes Coalition. And run SIPAC. Sponsored by MVA. Office of the governor. Tan Su Lin Foundation. Fit to lead. Fit to lead. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Docomo says an unscheduled power outage on Guam led to a disruption in internet services. In a release issued today, Docomo says they experienced a major outage affecting internet and fixed services. The outage yesterday lasted approximately seven hours. Additionally, call centers in both Guam and the CNMI were unable to receive calls. The exact cause is under investigation, but service issues began with an unscheduled power outage that happened in Guam around 7 a.m. Service today remains spotty in areas on Saipan. Docomo CEO Roderick Boss says they will start by issuing a billing credit to those affected and pledged a commitment on capital resources focused on internet. Six weeks to go until the mini games. Tonight we meet a beach volleyball competitor who is getting ready to pass, set, spike and nurse all at about the same time. Our Chris Nelson reports. Beach volleyball will be held at the Crown Plaza Beach in the heart of Garapan. The venue is located just steps away from the Saipan Lagoon, and it will be one of the few times in the Pacific Games that beach volleyball is actually played on the beach. Normally, sand is brought in and courts are constructed. This venue will be more natural. Kathy Wingfield and Charnessa Lazama will team up for the Mariana Islands on the women's side. Just a few months ago, Winkfield delivered her third child. Now she's delivering bullet train serves that other players call the Shinkansen. She also teaches math at Northern Marianas College. Finding time to train has its own set of challenges. Beach volleyball will include teams from around the Pacific, Guam, Palau, Tahiti, New Caledonia, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu took gold in 2019.
Thank you, Chris. Now, folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next. I have a tablet. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on tab. Get live TV on your tablet or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on tab. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Time to put down the sweet, lace up your sneakers, and hit the pavement. Join MVA, Governor Torres, Fit to Lead, CNMI, Tourism Month, 5K Fun Run, May 14th, 6.30 a.m. on Beach Road. Participants will receive a free t-shirt. And are you ready to raffle? Stick around for raffles, too. Register today at Mariana's Visitor's Authority Office, CNMI Office of the Governor, or online at the MVA site. Mariana's. It's time. We come together to get Fit, fit to, to Lead. Lead. Proceeds will benefit. Diabetes Coalition and Run Saipan, sponsored by MVA, Office of the Governor, and Tansu Lin Foundation. Fit to lead. to lead. I have a phone. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on phone. Get live TV on your phone or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on phone. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports, sports fans. fans. All right, for the K-SPAN Sports Report, in celebration of Tourism Month, the Marianas Visitors Authority, in collaboration with the Office of the Governor, will hold a CNMI Tourism Month fun run. The event is scheduled for May 14, 2022 at 6.30 a.m. The course will start at the Garapan Fishing Base all the way to the Japanese tank at the Quartermaster Road and then back. Registration is $10 and participants may register in person either at the MVA office in San Jose, the governor's office in Capitol Hill, or on the race day at 6 a.m. The race proceeds will benefit the Diabetes Coalition and Run Saipan. 
The sport of mixed martial arts is getting the attention of lots of young kids out there. One young lady shares her story with us. Never say never, because limits like fears are often illusions. A quote by Michael Jordan. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Another Taekwondo black belt holder is our young star for tonight. Here is 18-year-old Jin Yang. My name is Jin Yang and I'm, I just turned 18 today and I am a first degree black belt. Yang joined the Taekwondo school eight years ago when she was inspired by her sister. It first started um, in seventh grade, so it's been about like six, seven years or eight. It's been quite a while. And why Taekwondo? Um, so like at first, so like I first joined Taekwondo um because of my sister. Like she first joined Taekwondo and like her training really influenced me. At first, I didn't really wanted to join because as an introverted person, I felt really like inferior going to um places with a lot of people. But I just decided to go out of my comfort zone. According to her, Taekwondo is more about discipline and learning how to respect other people. Taekwondo is not about just training, it's really about discipline. Like to your um, parents, we have to respect, and especially to adults. So like that's um, like um, the typical or like the tradition of Korean, the custom, where like um, we really have to respect the adults, the, el the elders, and just even to strangers. Earning her first black belt means so much to her. She remembers all the challenges she faced before earning this belt. There were like definitely like a lot of challenges. Um, as a white belt, like I didn't know anything at all, kicking from kicking the pumse or anything. So um, the like first learning it was really hard and it was challenging. And when I was here as a um, white belt, there were like a lot of other black belts. So I felt really like inferior at first because I didn't know anything about it. But as I like progressed and then started to learn new kicks and I started to like um, train, I got. Um, like really good at it and now and a black belt. <laughs> Yang is encouraging young kids out there to try Taekwondo. It's good for your mind and body and it's fun too. Taekwondo is really fun. It not only like makes you train and how to um and you get to um learn to protect yourself and your family and your loved ones, but you also um meet new people. You get to form um different kind of bonds with diverse people like you know, and it's a really good sport that, you know, you can do. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Golfers come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Best night out at Godfather's Bar in Garabin. Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfather's has daily food and drink specials, like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week.
Located on Palm Street in Garrison, everybody is family at Godfather's Bar. Bada bing, bada boom. For the case, pan weather report, mostly sunny with isolated showers, east wind 15 to 17 miles per hour with gusts as high as 21 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy with isolated showers, east wind 10 to 16 miles per hour with gusts up to 20 miles per hour. High 89, low 77, a 75% humidity. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with isolated showers, east wind 13 to 15 miles per hour. High 89, low 76, the marine forecast, high risk of Rip currents along the east facing reefs through late tonight. Moderate to fresh winds and combined will prevail over the Marianas through the weekend. Combined seas of 46 feet will become 5 to 7 feet on Saturday. Sunrise will be at 5.51 a.m. High tide at 9.38 a.m. Low tide 5.26 p.m. And the sunset, you can catch that at 6.35 p.m. Well, there you have it, folks. That is your Friday edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We thank you so much for watching. We hope that everyone has a great weekend and you have a good night. We'll see you back here on Monday.